Today on the pipeline, we are lucky here at House Edge Media to be joined by not one, but the two-time Oyue League rushing leader, Dylan Campbell. Got a Lurie Golden Hawk on the line, a first-team All-Canadian. He averaged over 180 yards a game rushing. This guy's a stud, we all know it. And he played his OV ball for the Pickering Dolphins, who we're covering this week on the State of the Franchise. Dylan, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. So, Dylan, I know you didn't play every year, every year, sorry, of OVFL, but you played a little bit. Talk to us a little bit about what that time was kind of was like playing Pickering Dolphins back in the day. Well, you know, playing with the just Pickering Dolphins kind of helped me um, develop my skills as a running back, and you know, as everyone grew older, the playing field kind of evened up. As opposed to just run like go quick kick run to the outside, it helped me uh, to kind of like read my blocks and and make a cut up in the middle if I had to. All right, and anybody that watched OUA at all knows that you're one of the best there are at reading the blocks. So that's a big thing. So, I mean, I think for running backs growing up, it was kind of the position you just you throw the fastest guy at for uh, the bantam days, the tight days, everything like that. You you let the you let him run the 38 toss or the 39 toss, and you hit the edge. So, yeah, so you say it helps you read your blocks and stuff like that. Um, how did that help, do you think, in your high school, high school days? Do you think playing JV when you were younger, before you got all the way through high school, do you think that helped develop you into a stud in the high school ranks? Um, yeah, I think it's the definitely thing that helps because the high school is a bunch of people who some people have never played football before. So having the experience of, of playing OV before before I started off high school kind of gave me the edge against uh, some of the other guys I was going up against. Okay, all right. And uh, what would you have to say if you got to, if you got the chance to talk to any of the volunteers who used to spend their time back in the day? I mean, OVL is known that it's a volunteer driven league. Would you give them a give them a big hug if you got the chance? Do you keep in t- contact with any of those coaches you used to, used to have? Yeah, I definitely still talk to some of my coaches. You know. Just a big thank you to all of them uh, for the time and effort that they put in to help me to pretty much get where I am today. All right. So uh, after your long career, after you play in the CFL, you make the Hall of Fame, you win your great cups, after all that stuff, do you think that when you go back home, you got your job, think the OUFL is a league you might be able to see yourself putting some time back into, doing some running back coaching, doing that doing that little stuff to give back? Of course. You know, I mean, football is a big part of my life. It's a big part of who I am. So if I can even give back and help, even just one player to 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 reach their, for their full potential and, and accomplish their goals, and why not? All right, and I don't know if you're aware, but uh, so you're, so you're Pickering Dolphins. They're now the Durham Dolphins. Richard Karkari, the uh, ex Alouette, he just recently bought the, the bought the team this year. And we actually just talked to him recently on the phone. And he's got this whole big plan. His big plan is that he wants to change the culture around around Dolphins and around minor football in general. He wants to bring in the most experienced coaches. He wants the most experienced staff so that we can start to nurture football in Canada. And instead of having all these kids run away to get to the prep schools, we want them to stay here, play in our leagues, turn into Canadian studs that are growing the Canadian game, the Canadian culture. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, where you're coming from is on the up, up and up. Where you're coming from is on the upswing. And so if you ever wanted to go back to there, I'm sure they'd be welcome to have you. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like, great. It's definitely true because, um, like, as you know, we do we, us Canadians do a lot, lose a lot of our talent down south. A lot of kids leave and go down south to play wherever. So I think what uh, Kerry is doing is a great job and great idea. I completely agree with it. Okay. All right, now. So it's your draft year. You got the uh, CFL Combine coming up soon. What are you doing this uh, off season now that now that the season's done? Looking forward. What are you doing to prepare? What are you doing to get ready? Well, right now I'm just trying to work on the little intrinsic, intrinsic factors about um, – the different, the different tests that I'll be doing, you know, the little the, the, the techniques that you can need to use with, uh, with the pro agility or the 40, you know, different things that, that will kind of give you the edge. Because everyone, everyone's been, like in my position, who's been in the school for four years at Laurier, has been training, has been lifting. So I'm not too concerned with the, the weight aspect of things and, and the lifting weights as opposed to the speed and agility, you know, getting the extra time to, to work on your 40 starts, your pro agility starts or whatever. Okay. I don't know. CFL game's different, of course. Everyone knows that. So running backs, it's tough for. You working on the route running and stuff like that? Uh, definitely, am, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I think the one thing that said, uh, I believe Anthony Coombs was the first running back taken last year, and, I mean, anyone that watched those those one-on-one videos, he got to go out there and, and put some put some DBs on blast. He made made a fool of a couple of DBs running some routes. You kind you going to try to maybe get that same sort of thing going on? Of course, you know, it's definitely help, help my game and help me increase my jock, my jock, my jack stock, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I guess the last thing I just want to say real quick, sum, sum it up. Your time playing minor football, I know you played in a, a different league as well, not just the OVFL, but minor football is all the same. 
you're you're gonna go ahead and say that that helped you, right? Is that where do you think you really grew a love for the game? I mean, everyone can play on the street, everyone can play with their friends in the park, but getting to finally strap those strap that equipment on, playing with some of your best friends from around the neighborhood, is that a big part for you? Yeah, it definitely was. You know, where I gained some of these lifelong friendships that some guys that I ended up going to high school with as well. You know, just kind of became brothers on the football fields. All right, Dylan. Thank you so much. So everyone here at House Edge wants to thank Dylan Campbell for joining us. I mean, when you have arguably the best player in the entire country on your show, it's a it's a pretty big boost for us. And we wish him the best of luck going forward. We're looking to see his name called in that first round of the draft coming up soon. And uh, best of luck, Dylan. All right, thanks for your job, Yeah, no problem. Everything's here this morning.